Hello, it's me again, it's Evans. I'm just gonna go through all the stuff that you need for your module B6. Okay, remember B6 is about brain and the environment. First thing you need to know is how animals respond to the environment. And you need to know what a stimulus is. Do remember that stimulus is a change in the environment of an organism. So for instance, a loud noise or Mr. Spratt walking into the room like you just heard would be a stimulus. So you probably heard him, okay? He says sorry, by the way. Sorry. All right. Um, animals respond to stimuli in order to keep themselves um, out of danger, okay? Now, all animals have a central nervous system. Well, the clever ones do anyway. Jellyfish don't, but don't worry about those. Um, a central nervous system is made up of two parts. It is made up of the brain and the spinal cord. Now, connecting to the central nervous system, remember, are neurons called sensory neurons. So sensory neurons go from a receptor to the CNS. You've got a second type of neuron called a motor neuron. And the motor neurons go from the CNS to an effector. And repeat after me, effectors are one of two things. Remember, they are muscles or they are glands. Okay? Now, the receptors, which the sensory neurons pick up on, tend to be part of complex organs. So, for instance, if you can, instead of saying, for instance, the eye is a receptor, try to say the retinal cells in the back of the eye are the receptors, okay? All right, how do nerves work? Well, first of all, you need to know the structure of a neuron, and that is entirely up to you. Just draw it, label it, and remember it, okay? It's not that difficult. All right, second thing, do remember that nerves transmit electrical signals, yeah? Around the neuron is also a fatty sheath called a myelin sheath, and that does two things. It insulates it from neighboring cells and increases the speed of the nerve impulse. Okay? Now, at the end of a, new, new, a neuron, there is a gap before it goes on to the next neuron. That gap, remember, is called a synapse or a synapse. And you need to know what happens when an electrical impulse reaches a synapse. You ready? We'll go through the steps. Okay, step one. Electrical impulse reaches the synapse. Step two chemical transmitter is, re is released from the nerve ending. Step three, chemical transmitter diffuses across synapse. Step four, chemical transmitter binds to receptor molecules on other nerve ending. Step five, once a certain threshold is reached, another nerve impulse is sent. Step six, the electrical, the, the chemical signal is then recycled and taken back up into the nerve. Now, you need to know about the effects of ecstasy or MDMA on the body. Remember that ecstasy prevents the reuptake of serotonin, which is a chemical transmitter. If this happens, the amount of serotonin in the synapse increases. This is a very popular question, and they've asked it for the last two years during examinations. You also need to know the effects of ecstasy, okay, as an increase in mood, um, a general feeling of well-being, um, and followed by irritability the next day as the serotonin levels decrease. Okay, wait two seconds, and I'm just going to have a slip my tea because I'm thirsty. That's better. Right, types of reactions. There are three different types of reactions. I'm going to deal with the two most common ones first. Okay, first of all, we have simple reflex actions. A reflex action is also called an involuntary response. Examples would be blinking or putting your hand in a hot plate and removing it very, very flat, fast or a fly sort of flying away if you try to swat it with a bat or something like that. Okay? You need to understand the pathway of the reflex arc. Are you ready? You might want to draw this down. It is stimulus, receptor, sensory neuron, central nervous system, motor neuron, effector, response. Simple as that. Okay? Now, the other type of reactions are complex reactions, okay, or voluntary reactions. Now, remember, complex reactions and voluntary reactions can only be carried out by clever animals. As a general rule of thumb, if it's got a backbone, it is possibly could carry out these reactions. If it hasn't got a backbone, the chances are it can't. So slugs can't do complex reactions, okay? Bacteria, amoebas... Um, worms, they can't do complex reactions because they don't really think, do they? They don't have any thoughts, they don't have a diary, they don't plan what they're going to do the next day. So they rely on simple reflex actions. Now, the one that always comes up in the examination is 
the conditioned response, conditioned reactions. And the example which is always given is Pavlov's dog. This was some nutter who basically um, used to ring bells and then he used to cut the dog's throat and watch the saliva drip out. And he noticed that dogs could be conditioned to respond to another stimulus. So for instance, he rang a bell and the dogs would salivate. Okay? This is called a conditioned response because the stimulus has got absolutely nothing to do with the response. If you think about it, ringing a bell and salivating have got nothing to do with each other. And these are the key elements of a conditioned response. The example I used in class, remember, was mentioning the name Mr. King and you, all, you guys all doing your ties up. Okay? That, again, is a conditioned response. A conditioned response is one that can be learned. Okay? All right, the final thing you need to know about types of reactions is that certain, in certain circumstances, you can modify a reflex response via a neuron to the reflex arc. So, for instance, if you've picked up a hot plate and you have a baby on the floor, just for a few seconds, you can prevent the reflex action happening just so you can move the plate out of danger. Okay, learning new skills. Now, remember, in your brain, what you have are billions and billions of neurons, okay? They allow you to learn new experiences. When you learn a new experience, what happens is a neuron pathway is formed and it is more likely that the information will travel down that. As you repeat an experience, again and again, by repetition, the neuron pathway is strengthened, which means the speed of impulse is increased. Okay? All right. There is some evidence as well to suggest that certain parts, certain aspects of learning are only learned at certain times of your life. So, for instance, feral children, that's children who've been brought up without the influence of adults around them, can't learn language after a certain age. So, for instance, after puberty, if you haven't learned language by then, you're never going to be able to learn language. In the examinations, they might ask you which part of the brain is responsible for so-and-so, so-and-so. It is always going to be the cerebral cortex. That's the only part of the brain you have to remember, okay? The short-term and long-term memory are parts of the cerebral cortex, so they're found inside the cerebral cortex. Okay. The memory, the memory, the, the st memory stage model is something that you have to remember, which is quite complex. So if you just bear with me, I'll just go through it. First of all, you've got your sensory memory, and that's what you pick up from your eyes, or in this case, from your ears, or sometimes by touching things. When it goes through your sensory memory, it goes into your short-term memory. Now, from here, it can be lost if you're not careful. But if you repeat it, in other words, if you're mad enough to play this tape again after this recording and listen to it again and again and again, through repetition, it will go into your long-term memory. By the way, you probably have to listen to this about seven times before it goes in, so good luck. This is called the multi-store model. The other thing you might want to do is go into Google the search box and type in multi-store model and see what comes up, okay? Because that is something that you really, really have to learn. All right. How have we used, how have we actually studied the brain? There's a number of things that we've done, okay? And you have to just have a sort of touch and acquaintance, if you like, with things such as MRI brain scans and what they actually do. So you might want to check on that. Okay, I think that is it. So good luck in your examinations. And if there's anything else you need, just come and see me. Bye.